Good morning and welcome to our next meeting presenting the Q1 2024 results. The speakers are, as usual, uh, the board members whom I will not be presenting in great detail. So let's move now to the presentation. May I have the remote for the slides? This is our agenda, as usual, so let's not stop there. Moving on to the macroeconomics. Michał de Boer. No, apologies. I'm distracted. Before we go there, let me start with a brief wrap-up of Q1. Let me start with the profit, our Net profit in Q1 was 591 mil zlotys, which was up significantly by more than 20% year on year. Our revenue increased significantly, 6% up quarter on quarter, and 12% year on year. As regards volumes, our loan volumes remain flattish quarter on quarter. Our Expenses represent cumulative inflation and depreciation resulting from our consistently pursued investment policy and increased regulatory costs compared to the previous year. If you look at our three pillars under this strategy, I will not discuss each and every one of these bullet points, but let me uh, stop briefly and discuss the strategy and transformation pillar. What is new in the market uh, and quite successful is our new tennis card with the support of Iga Świątek, who is being very successful. Uh, I hope she will win in Rome and then in Paris, with uh, it, which should have a, a significant impact on our image and uh, recognition as a bank. Regarding our business activity, we saw solid growth in investment product sales, including our investment fund, company and structured investment products for retail clients. Remote channels are being used ever more extensively by our customers, which is good. And we also see the value that is generated by our branch network on top of that. Moving on to the part at the bottom on financial results, revenue, sorry, non-interest income increased, and I will, of course, elaborate on that later, on this very generic comment, uh, NIM stabilized, which is, we think, quite a positive outcome. Cost of risk remained normalized. We are long after the negative, the period of negative costs of risk in uh, the several quarters of previous year, but we still believe that the quality of our loan book remains very positive and safe. Two important highlights, events in Q1 and in Q2. First, an ABB deal where BNP Paribas SA Group reduced its stake in the bank and free float increased to 18.7% as a result, which is a positive outcome. Growing liquidity of our stock should bolster the stock price of our bank. And uh, the other important news, the dividend paid out to the shareholders on the 10th of May, last Friday. The first dividend we've paid, the dividend yield was 50%. And the management of the bank intends to remain, for the bank to remain a dividend paying institution. One final comment on uh, in this introductory part the impact of the risk of Swiss franc loans remained low at 20 million in Q1 after significant provisions we had set up last year. Q1 uh, showed a 
much smaller charge. Moving on to our pillars under the strategy. Again, I will not uh, read out all the um, text in the slide. What is important is that we remain a very active bank in financing the energy transition in Poland. We know that it is critical indeed. And this is where we have developed massive competences. We are keen, we are skillful, we are willing. So in Q1, we invested a total of 1.3 billion slotties in renewable energy sources and we will keep up on this trajectory. We have rebuilt our corporate branch network. With a focus on specific customer segments, this will improve our efficiency and uh, customer service and customer relationships, which is another upside. We are working hard to use AI in the bank. We are piloting a solution called Genius, a chatbot which helps our people identify the relevant applicable internal regulations by uh, clicking on the keyboard just once, which saves the time and improves the efficiency. Importantly, we've also offered behavioral protection for all our customers. In this day and age, cybercrime is rampant, becoming an ever increasing threat. So our behavioral protection mitigates the risk of illegal abuse of communication channels with the bank by unauthorized people, which we believe will strengthen the sense of security among our customers. Well, that will be it from me at this point. I'm moving on to a graphic presentation of some of our parameters. As I've said, we reported an increase in the number of customers using our digital channels by 2% quarter on quarter, which is quite good. The number of users of our mobile banking is growing even faster. Go mobile, I recommend it. It's really uh, slick, reliable. And the number of transactions with Blick has also increased. Blick being a great solution. And I do believe this growth will continue with this solution being uh, expanded and developed both in Poland and beyond. Moving on. Let me share some more graphic um, charts of our growth pace, starting with investment products, solid growth above the market quarter and quarter and year on year. We are happy to note that we have improved the personal account sales quarter on quarter, although our acquisition targets for both retail and corporate clients and SME customers are very ambitious and I do hope we will uh, step up uh, the process in the coming quarters. Uh, a bit more about loans, mortgages and cash loans. Both these product groups report an increase. Cash loans starting from a solid base, so it's a qualitative growth. However, mortgage loans started from a very low base. And the bank will be back in the mortgage market and become more active in this segment. Still remaining selective, but uh, more present with a bigger footprint than over the past few quarters when we decided uh, to be very, very selective. So these numbers were low. And now the loan and deposit volumes. I've mentioned the loans, which remained flattish quarter on quarter. 
reporting a moderate increase in corporate loans and a moderate drop in retail loans, with little activity in mortgages which played a significant role. We haven't yet seen a significant rebound of market demand from corporates. However, we have seen some early signs of recovery which should take place in Q2 or Q3, hard to tell, but the positive macroeconomics, the inflow of EU funds and large investment needs all suggest that the segment will grow. So we are optimistic. Deposits. The volume of retail deposits increased moderately, which is fine, and the deposits, deposit volumes of institutional clients dropped modestly, which is also okay. We are optimizing our deposit base in order to maximize the net interest margin. The number of customers remained stable. The mix of our customer base continued to improve with uh, more customers in the more attractive segments. As I've mentioned, our plans for the upcoming quarters include to improve the acquisition of new customer relationships. Now, I've already mentioned most of the numbers in this slide. Growing revenue, quite solid and um, good ground for optimism. I've mentioned expenses, low cost of Swiss franc loans, which doesn't mean that this story is over for a bank. So this risk persists, although we are very active in closing settlements and um, trying to mitigate or um, eliminate this risk and the net profit in Q1 was pretty solid. Let's have a look at the key financials, financial ratios. The cost income ratio increased modestly with a growing cost base, no surprise there. Stable NIM, net interest margin which we believe is a positive trend net of one-offs. We reported an increase, normalized cost of risk and return of e on equity of 18% above the cost of capital. That's, that's all in this introductory part. Let's now move on to the macroeconomics, which I somehow wanted to start with today. Thank you, Przemek, and good morning. The economy is now in recovery, but to be honest, the recovery is still being fueled by one single driver, being consumer spending, especially of households. After a very good year, 2023, for investments, at this point, we are seeing some stagnation, if not drop. But um, exports are unlikely to improve until the economies of our main trading partners pick up. By then, by that time, the consumer will remain king, if I may say so, as uh, regards the generation of Poland's GDP. This is propped up by fast-growing incomes, including wages and salaries and social transfers. And the households are probably very happy to see very low inflation, which still is driven by mostly um, falling commodity prices and the position of the Polish Zloty, but it does lessen the inflation pressures across the economy. What is uh, of some concern, especially to the central bank, is the probable likely increase of salary and demand pressures, which has not materialized so far, um, driving up inflation. 
if you look at the monthly numbers. The prices of services, including consumer services, are, however, picking up. When it comes to the outlook for inflation, the VAT increase has not yet had a major impact, as the central bank or other analysts expected, but it's not the end of um, the year. Energy prices are likely to grow in the second half of the year, and so inflation will probably be higher at the year's end than it is now. And this uncertainty, when it comes to the inflation trajectory in the coming quarters, is the main reason why the rates have remained unchanged since uh, October last. Uh, the most recent conference of the Governor of the National Bank of Poland seems to suggest that this year the rates will most likely remain unchanged. But we'll see what happens after the summer and at the end of the year based on actual inflation numbers and in a likely lower rate environment, at least in the Eurozone. The tight monetary policy supports the appreciation and the strength of, of the Zloty. The real rates are definitely positive at this point in time, which justifies or explains the strong position of the Zloty. Last but not least, the banking industry and the trends early in the year. It seems right to note that the deleveraging of the private sector is happening less fast, mainly due to lower deposit growth and probably with improved demand for lending. In retail segments, including housing and consumer loans, we can see a continuation of the trends first noted late last year. However, recent numbers, especially from March, in the corporate sector also give reason to be moderately optimist when it comes to the growth of lending in the corporate segment in the coming months. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Over to Mr. Konieczny. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you permit, I would like to discuss briefly the financial data. Let us start with the balance sheet. What was going on with the bank's balance? In the first quarter, we had a year-to-year -year increase of the total assets. This was mostly uh, driven by increase in customer deposits. we saw a significant growth dynamics combined in with stabilization of the loan portfolio on a quarterly basis nonetheless uh, on an annual basis there was a slight decrease and therefore the funds in investment ac uh, activity kept accumulating it is important if we look at the balance sheet structure and the interest rates trajectory uh, this explains what is going on in the income statement uh, or profit and loss uh, statement. In profit and loss, we see a clear increase in income from uh, banking activity, mostly driven by net interest income and supported by good results in the area of fee and commission income. As for trading results, um, the macroeconomic environment with reduced volatility and a strong currency results uh, in the fact that year to year we have a decrease. Nonetheless, it is still a strong contribution to the first quarter results. Costs or expenses. We have already talked about expenses uh, during the previous meetings. We said that we expect the inflationary pressure in the bank as well as the investment activity continued by the bank would result in an increase of expenses and a cost of activity. This has materialized and you can see it in the results for the first quarter. 
As for the remaining elements of the profit and loss statement, uh, we have the impact of Swiss franc portfolio after a major write-off in the fourth quarter of the previous year. In the first quarter of this year, we have indeed observed the changing dynamics. We did not have to introduce any model changes, so the write-offs are relatively low in the first quarter. As for write-offs uh, for risk, uh, for credit risk, uh, we go back to standard levels that are observed that are, so to say, expected levels for us. As for ratios and indicators, the most important one is the net um, in net interest uh, income. This is the biggest uh, share of the bank's income. We also have a very solid liquidity basis and the capital indicators have improved. In this context, I would like to say that we have closed a securitization transaction that has helped to strengthen our capital base and the uh, capital indicators. If we look at the loan portfolio now, maybe just one word of comment. If you look at the dynamics in the area of individual loans, customer loans, you see that this is the main area, and to be more precise, mortgage loans area, that influences the portfolio dynamics. Corporate portfolios are growing somewhat, individual portfolio noted a slight decline. And as Mr. President said, the bank will be coming back to this market in a selective manner in order to address uh, this development. Now, if we zoom into mortgage, uh, currency mortgage loan portfolio, the main trend trends were maintained. Major write-offs in the fourth quarter, coverage ratio nearly 115% at the end of the first quarter. Uh, in a book values, the value of the portfolio is approximately 700 million zlotys. So this is more or less it. If we look at the deposits now, you can also see the mechanisms that the president had mentioned. Continued increase in volume in retail banking and in corporate banking, we have also observed slight decline. As we said, the bank works on keeping the interest net interest margin on a specific level. Our situation is comfortable, so we can focus on that particular parameter. A few words about a phenomenon that we are observing and which is related to our liabilities or our clients' assets. You can see that very good dynamics continue with regard to increase in investment value. Year on year, it's almost 50% increase. Our clients choose the investment products offered by the bank and this allows us to manage the inflow of new funds into the bank and we adapt the savings uh, pr um, of uh, proposals to the needs of the clients. Now, if we look at this main income driver, which is net interest income, if we compare the fourth quarter to the first quarter, maybe a few words of comment are, are needed. In the fourth quarter, we were still rebounding from the loan vacation. So, sorry, from yes, from the loan vacation. So it did have an impact on our dynamics. But in first quarter, like I've mentioned before, beginning of this year or the end of next year, in order to meet uh, MREL uh, requirements, we have issued uh, the MREL uh, debt. It did have an impact on the cost of 
interest in the first quarter. Nonetheless, even given the additional encumbrances, as we work with volumes, large volumes, the dynamics are still satisfactory. Mm, fees and commissions. Well, I believe that the main comment from me here would be that in the first quarter we see a seasonal impact. It is a quarter during which all bonuses are calculated uh, for payment institutions and so on. So it is observed in the results reported for the first quarter. It was the same last year. It is the same this year. As for trading and investment income, as I mentioned in the beginning, in the client part, we are dealing with a situation. If you look at the data in the income statement or the profit and loss, you can see a certain pressure, you can see some problems, the economic environment results in demand for this kind of products decreasing and as a result we are seeing a market decline. We are happy however that despite the decline as we compare ourselves to other colleagues in the industry we seem to be falling at the slowest or the least of um, all of us. Now operating expenses. We have two main elements here. First of them is the inflationary pressure, which is formed with different dynamics at different periods, but it is it does have its impact uh, on us through the pressure on wages that we feel. And the second element is the increase in cost of depreciation caused by investment activity. Our bank continues uh, transformation, continues investment in digitization processes, in a broad understanding of the word, both uh, in front office and back office of the bank. Hence, the increase in costs is not a surprise. This does not change the fact that as we operate, we are not in the following quarters we uh, are uh, not going to undertake activities to, re to reduce it. Uh, credit losses, Wojtek, I think that's uh, yours. Good morning. The first quarter, in terms of cost of risk, uh, I think we ended at a normal level of 44 BP. However, we should mention that almost 19 or slightly over 19 BP uh, is attributable to a single exposure that is um, currently categorized as phase two. It's the exposure concerning large enterprises segment chemical industry. And uh, 44 BP seems a level, looking forward, that is fairly normal and we do not expect to repeat the situation of previous years when we had um, positive uh, cost of risk for almost three quarters. As for impaired loans, the level remains stable both in terms of value and nominal, so 3% in terms of percentages, 2.6 million in terms of absolute values or in amounts. We believe that this is a decent level, the desirable level, and this is where we would like to maintain our position with regard uh, to the entire bank. As for shares of each stage in the loan portfolio, the situation is the situation is stable as well. And a good thing is that the share of stage two in each portfolio is decreasing, and the share of stage three does not increase. So 
phase one is still uh, or stage one is still increasing what is important is that coverage in stage two has increased especially in the area of enterprises from 6.2 to 6.9 but this is again related to this one single exposure for which 42 million worth of provision was established in the fourth quarter and this is phase uh, stage two coverage remains stable on the level of 60-65%, depending on which segment we are talking about. Coverage always decreases slightly when a portfolio is being sold, and that happened in fourth quarter of uh, 2024. Uh, this repeats every year now and goes back to the stable level when a portfolio is not sold and additional provisions are established. Capital adequacy, back to you. Well, in capital adequacy part, I believe the good summary would be to say that there were no major changes in the first quarter. The bank meets all the regulatory requirements One event that was important for our uh, corporate life was closing a synthetic securitization uh, transaction with our uh, partner in IFC. Additionally, as uh, the President has mentioned, in this quarter we have prepared the first dividend payment in our history and we have paid it out, I think, on Friday. And this, I believe, is it in uh, terms of capital part. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to an end of the presentation portion of our day. As I said, this should be a good year for Polish economy. We have a recovery demand for financing and we believe this will give us a growth impulse. We would like to focus more than last year on finding new or attracting new clients, and we will do that. We continue our transformation processes, in, um, investment processes, digitization, with a major um, emphasis on internal processes. All that should translate into greater efficiency of the bank. Of course, one of important risk elements uh, remains in uh, the Swiss franc loans here and this uh, will be continued. The second quarter brought us the extension of the so-called credit holidays. It was a most unfortunate decision by the government parliament and president and the entire sector has been trying to convince the authorities not to do that, not to take this decision to just use the existing infrastructure. This did not happen, so we have evaluated the cost of uh, the credit holidays and we have booked minus 203 million in second quarter. Of course, we will monitor the level of take up of these so called credit holidays by our clients and make po any uh, needed adjustments. Capital management, this is of course always important for us to manage our equity efficiently and maximize return on equity. But we also have to of course work on quality of our work, of work with our clients in every segment. This I believe is it for this segment. Thank you for your attention and we can move on to questions and answers. Good morning. The floor is open for questions. Any questions in the room, please? Good morning. Jarek Sorczyka, PKO. Several questions, if I may. The first is about the expenses. In Q1, net of the BFG contribution, did your expenses remain at a regular level? Were there any extra expenses? On the slide, you talked about the cost of consultancy. Was this a one-off? or a recurring cost. Let me put it this way. 
to be brief. Q1 seems to be a good measure or prognostic of our expenses. That's That goes to your first question. On your second question, the consulting expenses, well, consider it specific to Q1, part of the Q1 cost base. And one follow-up question about long-term funding ratio. Would you be willing to share your estimate of the ratio at the end of Q1 according to the rules proposed by the KNF? And the second question, a broader question, what is your expected strategy to meet the requirement in the future if it kicks in? Well, regarding estimates, I'm not ready to uh, tell you. We are analyzing this. We are also in dialogue with uh, partners in the Polish Bank Association. Well, the ratio e is slightly controversial. The question is, what level it will be? and whether it will be imposed. Hard to tell. In our case, such a ratio, given our ownership structure, would allow us, if necessary, to look for extra funding to meet the requirement of the ratio. And then, of course, we will go to our majority shareholder and partner. However, we will always make sure what the market has to offer. So when it comes to meeting the requirement, I'm not concerned. The main question, however, is what is the um, expected or appropriate level of the ratio and what will be the additional cost on our mortgage loans, especially the new production of mortgage loans in the market. So it's a question of how much rather than or what the price should be or rather than how much. And my last question, legal risk of consumer loans, however. Could you share your estimates? Number of uh, legal actions regarding the so-called free loan sanction, the value of those claims and the case law expected. Well, this is not a major issue at the bank. I haven't heard of a single judgment that would be adverse to the bank. Well, if there are no further questions from the floor, uh, let me share the questions announced online. Marcin Czapliński, BKBP. Why did the KNF expenses grow to 19 million compared to the amounts reported in the quarters of the previous years? Well, it's a matter of recognizing these costs. In previous periods, they were recognized on a monthly basis. This is a one-off recognition in Q1. That's the main difference concerning the growth, if you compare the numbers. Robert Litke, bank. Looking at the growth of the bank's lending, are you uh, fans of the 0% loan program? Well, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of uh, solutions that have nothing to do with market conditions. We did not participate in the 2% loan program and we have not decided to get involved in the 0% loan program either. To follow up on mortgage loans, Agnieszka Morawiecka, Puls Biznesu, 
Could you remind me when the bank um, reduced its mortgage sales? What are the quarterly mortgage sales this year and next year? And a similar question from Ipopema. When are you expecting to see bigger numbers of mortgage sales? If I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, the decision to restrict or rather to follow a very tight selective policy of selling mortgages, that decision took place in 2022. Now, you've asked a number of questions. I am not sharing my plans when it comes to the quarterly mortgage sales numbers. We do not share that. Looking at the numbers of credit applications, we can see that our customers are very interested in this product. But as I've said, we will remain very selective with this product, both in uh, terms of credit risk and the capacity to build long-term transaction-based customer relationships. When will this be uh, reflected on our balance sheet? We will be building up this portfolio steadily. It's already started and we will see a reflection in Q2, though relatively small, but in the following quarters this should be more of a figure. Another question, were there any increases in salaries in the first quarter 2024? Yes, yes, there were raises like every year starting from March and that is why in our results we do see the impact of uh, raises for one month. In the following quarters this result will be more visible, fully visible. The mentioned uh, securitization transaction, what was its impact on equity ratios and capital ratios in the first quarter. 17 BP uh, for tier one. What impact in your uh, capital ratios uh, do you expect from CRRI and CRD4 uh, regulations? Well, we are implementing, currently implementing a project that is expected to measure it precisely and at the same time we will undertake activities that would um, and measures that should help us to minimize any negative impacts. It's difficult to name specific numbers right now. As we speak about uh, equity, does tier one assume inclusion of 50% net profit from 2023? No. No, in brief, no. What level of cost of risk we should expect uh, throughout 2024? Is the beginning of the second quarter a good uh, result? Well, I do believe that the level of 40 BP is a pretty good uh, benchmark and a good prediction of what could happen in the entire banking market, including our bank. Is the level of depreciation of the first quarter taken as run rate? Well, depreciation in 2024 will be an important factor influencing uh, the value of the costs. As I mentioned before, the bank did and does conduct investment activities, so we can expect it will be a significant factor shaping the cost dynamic. Did the take up of the loan, sub loan uh, or borrower support fund increase? Oh, this is uh, really a provocative question, but it's only one step from discussing the credit holidays. But I will not be provoked. No, the uptake of the borrower support fund remains low. Another question comes from Reuters. You have seen signs that the recovery of demand for financing should happen. Do you believe this is likely to happen in the second half of the year? And what kind of year-on-year -year dynamics do you expect? are you expecting? Well, we know quite a lot and we see quite a lot uh, based on our dialogue with the clients about potential transactions, potential investments, potentially higher 
needs of work capital financing. This has not materialized yet. We will see what is going to happen. If we look at a market as a whole, the corporate loans market volume wise has really not changed. So it's difficult to say whether it will happen in the second, third or fourth quarter. I personally would think it would happen in the second half of the year. The next question, Maciej Rutke from Business Insider. Uh, the governor of the NBP um, announces increase of anti-cyclical buffer to 2%. How do you assess this move given the loan uh, dynamics is still low? Aren't you afraid of systemic risk? Well, ladies and gentlemen, given the current cap uh, capital situation of the sector, the MREL requirements, the enormous needs of Polish economy, in terms of energy transition or defense, this move seems unjustified and unnecessary. Going back to Credit Zero, the zero loan, speaking of the decision of joining the program, does it mean that you do not intend to participate in the program or that you have just not decided as yet? Well, never say never. At this time, we have not decided to join. It cannot be excluded that we would at some point, although I would not bet a lot of money on that. We will be focusing on going back to the mortgage loans market, the real marketable market. This was the last question online. So if we don't have any more questions in the room, I think this is it for today. Maybe we should count down from five to one so that we give our guests uh, room to ask questions in any channel. So five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much for participating in our meeting. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for questions and see you next quarter.